Hi, my name's Dan, and this video is one in a series of videos that I'm doing on using uh, widget blueprints in Unreal, sometimes called UMG Motion Graphics. Sorry, Unreal Motion Graphics, UMG for short. Um, and uh, in this one, I'm going to show you how to have interactive elements in your uh, in your interface. And what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, do a simple quit button which is going to be on screen and uh, which the, the user can click on to quit the game. Uh, so the setup that I've got is I've got a standard third person template uh, map here. I've got a previously created down widget, but in this widget, there's nothing but a canvas panel, which allows us to do some layout. Um, I've also got the, uh, just open the local blueprint, uh, the code that, displays that widget. So a quick recap, if you've not uh, done this before, is inside the level group, uh, level blueprint from event begin play, uh, you need to create an instance of the widget, and then you need to add it to the viewport for it to be displayed on screen. Um, so at the moment, nothing will display because there's nothing actually in the widget. So that's the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create that button. Um, uh, so let's get back into the widget, and we're just going to do a simple uh, drag of a button into the screen. We're going to expand it a bit sideways because it's a bit narrow, and maybe down a bit as well. And we're going to put some text on that so that we know what, what it is. And we're, so we'll just drag that and highlight over the button so it's um, the term we'd use is being childed. Um, so the button becomes the parent for the text. So when you drag the button around, the text moves with it. And we'll just do some quick changes to the text. I'm going to change the color to a, a dark blue. There we go. I'll match with text content to be the word quit. I find it hard to find that text content some, for some reason. Um, Okay, so in uh, uh, a couple of minutes, we will show you how to get that to respond to uh, a, a mouse click event. But before we do that, we've got a, a few things that we need to deal with. Um, so first of all, I'll, I'll try and demonstrate these things. So the first thing, to, uh, I should be showing the actual game. So in the game. Now you may have noticed when you um, play uh, start to run games in Unreal that, um, sorry, in the Unreal Editor, that you have no control until you do a single click inside the viewport window. And then as soon as you do that, you can have control and I'm moving it around. And this is mildly annoying. And I'm going to show you how to fix that as um, one of the three things that I'm going to do. Uh, the second one is that... Um, Ah, yes, we'll go back into the plane. As you'll see, once I actually start playing, the mouse cursor has disappeared. So we can't actually use the mouse cursor to do anything. Um, and uh, as I'm moving the mouse about at the moment, it's moving the camera. If I right-click, it does the same. Um, and then the other thing is that even if we had the mouse pointer uh, showing, when it hovers over the quit button and you click, it still wouldn't actually do anything because we need to tell uh, Unreal the game that we want to use interface input as well as the character control input uh, that we're using. So we need to do those three things. Uh, so we're going to get into uh, reopen up the level blueprints. Uh, here we go. And that's nice and big, so I'm not going to uh, zoom in. So the first thing is this. Um, uh, making it so that we don't have to click. This is just um, a, a little bit of a convenience, but to be honest, it mildly frustrates me that this isn't done automatically. Um, so I'm trying to remember exactly what the word is. But it's, So we need the word focus, and it's set focus to game viewport. I will zoom in. Because that's exactly what we need. So now... 
I could go prove that, but let's do all three things at once. So to do the other two things, I need to get hold of the player controller. Um, so player controller, get player controller. There we go. Um, and so, so this is going to uh, allow us to see the mouse pointer. It's a little bit strange. Um, it's not. You kind of think uh, something like show mouse pointer would work um, and this does actually get what you want but it's, it's worded a bit strangely it's a set show mouse cursor the reason why it's a set you can see there's a get as well is because show mouse cursor is the name of a variable inside the player controller um, and it's a, a boolean variable and so we need to set this to true and when we do that that will actually set the uh, make the mouse cursor appear the mouse pointer um, and to make it disappear again if you wanted to do different uh, interactions at different times then uh, obviously you can set that to false and make it disappear and then the third thing which is to actually respond to uh, inputs is also from the player controller so the player controller is a filter for uh, the inputs that uh, that come in uh, from the whatever device the player is using um, and for this one, we want to do a uh, set input mode. And there are three choices here. So there's the set input mode to game only, which means user interface stuff won't receive inputs, and um, just the game itself. <coughs> Excuse me. We can set it to user interface only, and we might want to do this if we've got, say, a, a pop-up menu that we want, which stops the player from being able to do anything that's in the game and allows them to you know, use that interface. And in a later video, we'll be showing that in uh, uh, in the making of a pause menu. Uh, and um, the one that we want for this is to set input mode to game and UI so that both of them can receive inputs. Uh, you have to be a little bit careful with this depending on uh, what inputs you've got because if you've got you things that are the same input for both then um, then yeah, <laughs> uh, you might have a, a conflict or two things happening at once. Um, I'm also going to click the hide cursor during, game, uh, during capture uh, and disable that so the cursor's always shown. Right, let's zoom back out, hopefully. I have programmed that right, and it will work. There's always this risk. Um, so uh, what we've not got yet is anything happening when you click the button. But let's uh, play. So the first thing you can see is that the mouse cursor is there. Now, this looks like it does... Uh, when you um, when you first run a game and you have to click in the viewport, I haven't clicked in the viewport and I'm using the uh, WASD keys to move about. Uh, when I click in the viewport, um, actually, when I move the mouse about, it no longer moves the camera about for obvious reasons. That we've got the mouse and we want the um, the mouse to. Uh, go to buttons and things without actually affecting the camera. So in order to move the camera uh, in this mode, you need to either left click and hold to drag around or right click and hold to drag around. And as you can see, the um, the UI is is doing a mouse over when it goes to the quick, quick, but if I click it, nothing's actually happening. So we've set it up so that it will accept that input, that click, and now the the last thing to do is to actually make it do the functionality. So this is finally getting to the stage where we can do what this video is really about, which is how to get this to respond to some kind of input. Um, and it's really easy. So we're just going to open up the, uh, the editor again for the widget and kind of highlight the quit button and look over here. And as you scroll down at the bottom here, there's a set of potential events. Let's zoom in again. Yeah. Um, and the events are on clicked. That's the one that we're going to use. Uh, on pressed. I'm not sure what the difference is between on clicked and on pressed. It's massive. But cold when the button is pressed. Cold when the button is clicked. 
don't know. Uh, Cold One of the Button is released, so quite a lot of interfaces. Uh, it's subtle, but you don't necessarily notice it. Uh, but the actual response to when the button is released rather than when the button is clicked. And this uh, allows you to change your mind when you're partway through uh, the process. Uh, we've also got hovered and unhovered, so we can get it to do, t t to do tool tips or things like that. But for a quick button, I'm just going to use the unclicked. And um, all we need to do then is to, to respond to this, is to click on the plus button uh, here, which creates... An event so now we've gone into the um, the graph the events graph uh, in the widget so um, don't do that um, this is you could control this with this designer and graph up here uh, so you can still go back to the designer and back to the graph and uh, here's the button so this is the event that will be triggered when the button is clicked and all we're just all we're going to do is to quit on those very simple node for that quick game um, when you're doing interactive interfaces, and this is not just in Unreal, it is uh, in any language when you've got what's called a GUI, graphic user interface, uh, I have never seen one in which it is not done by what's called event-driven programming. So you end up having to deal with uh, some kind of event system that generates events, and then you need to have code that responds to those events. Uh, to work out what's going on. Um, and this one is one of the most straightforward ones that I've ever come across. Um, I've seen some very convoluted ones, for example, in Java, the programming language. It is quite bizarrely horrible. Um, so in Unreal, it's pretty, pretty easy. And so hopefully this is going to demonstrate uh, all those little bits of functionality. I'm just going to press F11 so we get a nice big view i haven't clicked in the screen yet but i can i do have control i can move the, uh, the camera around by holding the uh mouse buttons down and um i could have had that if i hadn't clicked that button to uh show the cursor when captured i, th I think the cursor disappears when i'm doing this which may feel more natural um and then as i hover over the button when i click it we're going to click again there we go. So it's done exactly what I uh, promised it would. And so uh, that's it from me for now.